Hello everyone, this is Kulsum from Zerodha and welcome to our podcast. Today we have with us Shelly Chopra, an author, an established journalist and the founder of She the People TV, a digital platform for women in India. She is also looking into health with Gayatri and today we will discuss about women health and entrepreneurship. So let's get started. Hi Shaili, uh, you are looking absolutely beautiful today. I hope you're doing well too. Uh, Thank so you. yeah, so t- to get started, right? So I wanted to talk about your journey, uh, journey in journalism, and uh, how you thought you should quit a good career uh, and uh, get into entrepreneurship and starting up your own businesses for our young audience that is watching. Thanks so much. It's such a pleasure being with you here, Kulsum. And um, thank you for asking me to be on your show. There's a lot that uh, went into my journalism career. And perhaps I could say in hindsight that, uh, you know, it's been a career well spent. Um, spent about 15 to 16 years bringing the business news <laughs> to the world, uh, breaking big deals and stories. At a time, startups were a very different beast altogether. I think the term startup was not even present back in the day. Um, But it's been an absolute, um, you know, exhilarating journey to be able to do something new every day. And I think that's been uh, very, very rewarding when you work as a journalist that you wake up to a new story and sometimes the story wakes up to you. uh, Mm -hmm. And then that brings you out uh, in a way that uh, you never imagined. There's a new person every day on screen. Uh, But, you know, journalism also taught me how to find stories. It also taught me how to find what's not found. And that's what led me to quit a a glorious (laughs) uh, journalism career at the top of it to say, I'm going to take a jump off this peak and um, plan what I think I should be doing. Having a mission in life uh, to tell more stories of women, help them uh, solve for many other issues uh, like independence, confidence, and also health. So I think, uh, you know, journalism was a great window to the world. And it helped me identify my cause. And that's why I'm very thankful to that part of my career. That is so amazing to listen to, like coming firsthand from you. Uh, So I was scrolling through your Instagram, uh, not stalking, of course. And I found this picture where you have stood in front of Taj and you're live reporting, right? And the smoke coming in the background. And that is very exasperating to even look at that picture so if you can recall what was your experience like so that picture that you've seen on my instagram timeline is actually um 12 hours after the first blast okay. went off in uh, the dome of the taj uh, where i happened to be the first reporter along with a colleague of mine um at that very time when the first big attack took place at the center of Taj. Um, You know, I always say this as I look back to that, that um, it's the day I went from being a journalist to a person. It's a very unusual shift. Normally, people go from being a person to a journalist. Uh, And I say this because I realize how the two are not not interlinked. They're very deeply linked. Um, We as journalists in the media in the past have had this debate, are you the person telling the story or are you fixing the story there's a famous um, and a very controversial image of a photographer's uh, work who pictured an Ethiopian child who was almost dying looking like a skeleton Mm -hmm. and uh, you know there's a bird trying to attack that child in a bit to grab it in its uh, talons and uh, the question was should this person save the child should the person take the picture And I answered this question for myself. I said to myself, I'm not telling the world who are the people stuck inside. You know, as you know, I was a business journalist back then. And hotels are mostly occupied by business people who Mm -hmm. sit in the top chambers and cut big deals. I knew every single person, their son, their daughter, their father, their sister, their mother, who was stuck there. But I chose not to name the people who were stuck there. Uh, And that shifted my quality of journalism, my style of journalism uh, forever. I would never compromise somebody's information if it would hurt them. I would not stick a mic in the face of another person to say how they felt when they were walking down, you know, a fire uh, engine staircase. Um, I've never done that. 
and an unusual situation is to be a business journalist and land up in a position where you report on India's biggest terror attack. And then you say, you know what, this is not just a story. This is a reality I have face to face with. And that's how you report it. Yeah. It just gives me chills to even listen that the story from you. And yeah, we'll uh, talk about your entrepreneurship journey, entrepreneurship journey more, right? And how did you happen to start She the People TV first? So if you could, yeah. Yeah, so so for me, um, when I decided to get off the, the journalism bandwagon, I had a one goal. I had one goal and that goal was, what can I do for women in India? Uh, how can I change the way girls and women wake up every morning and think less of themselves? Um, what is it that we need okay. that will move the needle? I knew media. I knew journalism. I knew how little coverage we were giving women. So I said, maybe I'll start with what I know best, which is to start talking about um, the journalism story around women. Right. So I started, um, I literally took a little phone and walked around the streets of Bombay, which is my favorite city because women are so emancipated, right? Yeah. And I asked them, you know, the Chai Valley. I asked the lady who was just running her household. I asked a woman who worked in the stock market and another one who was the CEO of a company. I said, tell me, tell me about your journey. Tell me who you are. Why did you want to achieve this? And she just turned around and asked me a question. You think I'm an achiever? And I said, you think you have doubts about that? And I realized that there was so much doubt among women about whether they were achieving or not, or whether they were moving the needle. And I said, this is my mission. I'm going to change the way women think about themselves. And I started as one. And today we are 20 million women on She the People in one way or the other. And we're finding a way to change their lives, right? Uh, as we change our own uh, you know, this isn't about me, them. It's all of us together. Okay. So that's how She the People was born with an aim to change the way we think about women. And how does one do that? To begin with, we start talking about more and more role models, right? Uh, we see them more in magazines. We see them more on websites, on YouTube and Instagram. Once we see it, we believe it. And that is the change. Right. Yeah, so you've come across so many women, like you said, and uh, you've seen their journeys. And in your uh, a book called Feminist Rani, you've also written about, explored the lives about uh, women who have broken the barriers, right? So uh, if you can recall some inspiring stories that inspired you in the first place and uh, share some of them. With us. So there are many stories of women that inspire me. And, uh, you know, in my latest book, which is Sisterhood Economy, I actually went on to interview nearly 5,000 women. Most of them would be faceless. So in the past books, perhaps more prominent women, but off late more women who have um, who have just very real journeys, right? Like yours and mine. I mean, we I, I grew up in a middle class uh, household. I was told very earlier on, you want to get successful, go and earn your own money. And I was like, really, is that the case? Yeah. Class 12, when I was earning my money, I earned through every single day of my college because I realized what power that money was bringing me. Mm -hmm. The ability to decide for myself, right? Which is more valuable than being rich. It's more valuable than being happy sometimes. It's more valuable than being, I don't know, successful in the eyes of the world. So I think that was very important for me to recognize that. Where do I come from? I'm a simple girl with a really, really big ambition who will do a lot to hustle and learn and earn what she wants to. Uh, and I realized my next door neighbor had the same story. Uh, the lady below in the house had the same story. And I said, guess what? We just have different manifestations, yes. but inherently we're the same people. We want to just do better for ourselves so people don't take us for granted. And that's how the idea of the sisterhood economy came about, which is no longer a book for me. It's a book as a starting point. But I believe that I'm building the sister road economy in India. First with She the People, as I did over the last seven years. And now with Gayatri, uh, bringing solutions to women. There are three pillars to life. Awareness, access and availability. I've solved the awareness piece by talking about the need to create an established, credible platform where women can come, learn, engage, be part of the community and talk their heart out. And brands and organizations can recognize the power of that size of community. And now I'm creating solutions, specifically picked health as a core area to say, 
here you go. You need doctors, you need health experts, you need nutritionists. We'll roll it out for you. Solve it for yourself and we'll be around to guide you for it. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about Gayatri. Uh, so uh, do you also follow a health and fitness routine as such? I mean, it is important. And can you also tell us how important it is for women to, you know, take care of their health? Now that we see post-COVID, uh, women are facing a lot of hormonal issues and other issues. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Kulsum, women have always had hormonal issues. Post-COVID, we're just waking up to say, oh, you know what? I know a little more about myself. Yes. And uh, the truth is that we end up calling women's health as if we just need to wear our tights and go on for a jog and that's healthy. It's not. Women's health, like anybody else's health, is an extremely specialized area, which means it needs specialists who understand women's bodies to work on it. So when Gayatri was born, we were very conscious of this differentiation. Women's health does not mean popping in a vitamin every day and hitting the gym. It means understanding what your body is doing and which time of the month and which time of the year and why it's doing what it is. And then having a constant guide with you who is who's basically the specialist in your health needs. Right. So what does Gayatri do? It offers a guided program through the year for women to say she's your one point person. You have a nutritionist challenge. Tell her and she'll figure out what you what you need to do and who you need to meet. You have a gynecological issue. You have fertility problems. She's your guide, the one stop place. She will guide you to the right gynecologist who addresses fertility issues and essentially become your one point person, you know, like your your mantra to say she's around and she'll tell you who to meet. All you need to do is get onto the platform. Rest is for us. You will not be told to put reminders. We'll put the reminders. Why is this important? Because women don't put their health first. They're like, oh, family of four, I'm last. She's last before even if, you know, even somebody's asked her, she's like, no, it's the assumption. I'm last. That's how it works, right? We've all been raised like that. And I think we need to change that. We need to put ourselves first simply because a happy woman is a happy family. A satisfied woman is a happy family. Um, a satisfied, happy, content, healthy woman is a happy self, even if she doesn't have a family, right? So I think we have to think um, and rethink our conditioning. The task is hard. It's not easy. But my task with She the People was very hard. And I know what it is to play the hard game. And I am right here doing that. I mean, it's commendable what you've done. So it's 2023. And we see a lot of women entrepreneurs coming, uh, you know, to the light. And uh, in, at Zerodha, we also come across a lot of uh, women entrepreneurs that have started at a very uh, less age of theirs and uh, doing a very nice job at what they do, right? So uh, since you have the exposure, do you think there are still many challenges that uh, women entrepreneurs face and how can uh, we tackle them? So have we moved the needle? We have. And I would say in many ways, She the People has run that journey uh, with India, right? Being a part of an ecosystem that is finally seeing that women are just as good as anybody else, if not in many cases, better. Uh, but I think what's important to recognize is that just because 10 women, um, including myself, have raised money and have grabbed headlines that we've changed the world. We've not. We've not changed the world. Right. Uh, we need more women. We need more people to back them. We need more people to put the money where the mouth is. Uh, I, I'm delighted to see that in my journey as a woman, I've had men who have not just backed me, they've supported me, they believe in my efforts and they see the results, right? They also recognize that what I'm trying to do is crack a hard market. The recognition by a lot of men and women in my journey has actually given me that wind beneath my wings. So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but I think more, of, more women need that. More women also need other women to lift them up. For me, it's a huge, huge agenda to hire more women. Uh, and for, for them to see that what they're doing creates magic and not because I have hired them, because it's inherently in them to do that. So I think this is something that needs to shift um, in the last decade or so. I would say the last three years have been far more, um, you know, sort of on, on a higher pace of uh, seeing more women in the focus. Uh, similarly, in terms of uh, conversations in the economy, um, perhaps some lip service in the Indian budget. 
But a lot more needs to happen and it needs to happen in fundamental places. We no longer want people to say India has more women. We need people to say India has more women in healthcare and they're changing the game. We want to see the more women who are taking, uh, you know, ISRO on. I mean, we've got some five brilliant women who've done that, but m many more women. The other thing that needs to change is that we don't necessarily need women to be celebrated only when they become CEOs or raise money. It's very fascinating. You and I are talking in a startup construct. <laughs> Uh, the truth is that a lot of the times uh, how successful a person is, is benchmark against what they raise. That to me is a, it's a big, you know, it's a, it's, it's a big question mark that faces today's world. Why? Because what about the impact? Very small organizations uh, who haven't raised much money are making colossal impact. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, and impact doesn't mean that they're going just necessarily to rural India and let's say, you know, helping women earn. That's great impact as well. But just impact by having a very big voice, having very high engagement levels with, uh, you know, deep community and technology and, you know, women connected in it. So I think we need to start benchmarking differently. And that's what I love about the fact that I keep every eight years switch off one career and try another one because I feel that women can do it again and again and again and still be successful. Yeah. It's just so thrilling to listen to you talk like this, right? And uh, yeah, so I have a few cliche questions, but there is there are still young audience out there who would want to listen to this, right? So... How does the one balance a busy scheduled life like yours and uh, still make an impact? Like sometimes the impact is very measurable, like how much you put across and comes off, sometimes comes off very little. And how do you balance all of that? You want a truthful answer? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I, I don't. I, balance is not a word in my dictionary. Yes. Um, I'm not a big fan of the word balance because it sometimes makes me give up things. There is a lot I don't want to give up. Uh, I am extremely privileged as a person. Uh, and I say that not because I come, you know, I've, I've, I've earned my way through or I'm self-made. It's that I have a voice today. You are interviewing me. I have to be very careful about how I nurture this privilege. And most importantly, I'd like to tell every young woman out there that the reason I'm telling you an honest answer is because sometimes women don't have a choice to not seek that balance. We have a long way to go. Or what they say, we have miles to go and we've just started. And I don't want to leave this treadmill simply because I know it's just not me. It's a lot of us. And we are out here to make sure that many others who come in the generations after us recognize that this is what is taking women to stay out there and up there. So I don't seek balance. Uh, I, I thrive in madness. I love um, le high levels of passion flowing and energy. And I'm a big fan of how rage has positive uh, impact within orgs because somebody's anger is somebody's great solution. Uh, but all of that said, I simply say that, you know, one shouldn't let our health deteriorate. So if you want to strike any balance, go and opt for something that keeps your health on track. That to me is an important factor. And to me, that's not really seeking balance. It's finding the tool that's going to keep me going, right? Yeah. It, it's the portion that's going to keep me on the move because I would like to stay on the move. And um, I think, therefore, don't try looking for balance because sometimes we end up trying so hard. It's frustrating. And then just the whole exercise becomes one about that balance becoming the end when all it needs to be is a comma in your journey. So don't waste your time trying to seek it. If it comes, it comes. Right. Uh, so over your uh, long career of in different, different sectors and all of that you've done. So how much of a part men have uh, contributed in your life? So let me say this, you know, I love men. I mean, they have been such a big part of my life. Um, growing up, you know, I, I hung out with a lot of guys as I did with women. Uh, I'm a sporty person. I sprint, I run, and I spend a lot of time in places where there are more men than women, just by way of, let's say, the games I used to play, like golf, one of them. Um, but I think what's been uh, very rewarding for me as a person is to is to not get intimidated by men. It's very easy for women to do that. It's not their fault. We've been conditioned, right? 
So I've had to fight myself a little bit there, fight my conditioning to say that, you know what, I'm so sorry, but I'm not any less, even if I'm not any more, right? That is, by the way, a piece of um, our journey that women need to come face to face with. This is perhaps the reason many men have backed my ventures from Anand Mahindra, she the people, uh, you know, Nitin Kamath, Ajay Srinivasan, and many others at uh, Gayatri. Um, and I think the reason they do that is because they see that I am a person who has potential and it's not just about my gender. I mean, I know how to do my work, right? Uh, so I think the more we see ourselves as equal, the more the world also sees us equal. I recognize the environment is ugly. It can get tough for women. But the only way to navigate that with your hard nose is to know that you ain't any less. Once you do that, that person in the mirror at least is ready to move, right? Yes. And once she moves, things move for her. So um, I don't want to make this simplistic. I recognize that we all have our struggles. Even now, as somebody who is... Um, just crossed her 30s, has done X number of years in television, is a public figure, runs a channel that people love. I face the same that a lot of you do. Don't think it gets any easier, but I think we're all here. We'll help you. We're around. Just ask. So to do all of this and uh, achieve whatever we can, there is a lot of uh, mental energy also that goes through into it. So do you have any any like mantra or anything that where you keep your mental energy sane or uh, keep your mental health intact, right? Did I mention I have two kids? Oh, oh my God. God, maybe you want to take your question back. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like self-explanatory. Right? I know what you mean, right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think um, we all find a way to zoom out. Um, we, we all have these... Uh, these moments, however tiny they are, it's a bit like taking a power nap, right? Sometimes I close myself in this very study and just sit under the sun reading two pages of a book and telling myself I'm only reading this book. And I sort of feel like a sense of Buddha for a minute, right? Um, my, my moment of Zen. Uh, what I don't do is that, you know, when I recognize that I am undergoing a little bit of mental health crisis, which by the way, each one of us goes through, okay? Yes. I'm only thankful that in 2023, at least in some parts of our cities, the word therapy is not scary. Uh, to me, therapy is almost just like chatting with somebody. I mean, I am really enjoying doing, doing this interview. I'm already feeling better about my day. You know, um, there are different ways to get therapy, uh, chat with different people, drive different outcomes. I think all of that's beautiful. One should aim to do that and, um, and not fear that if you are seeking help, that there's something wrong. I mean, <clears throat> people who are young, I, my first startup uh, started one day before my child was born. I have no idea why I took on two things together, but I did, right? Uh, and many women do that. I mean, the woman who's, you know, the best instant uh, to me in life is like that person who is lifting bricks and has a little child in, wrapped in her sari. And she's going about her work. She's just telling me I can do it, right? But what we all are fortunate to have is access to help. We should take it. Yes. Not, not worry. Pick up a phone, talk to a friend. Feel like crying, do that. Crying is so therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? Just, <laughs> just, just went out. Yeah. Just went out. Because I, th I think, um, I mean, I should just say this honestly. There is no person in the world I know who doesn't wake up and look in the mirror and say, oh my God, I just suck. I'm terrible. <laughs> we all do it. We're human. I think even yeah. the tigers do it. But I'm just saying, they just can't like voice it like yeah. the way they do. I'm sure they have a version of it, right? So I think we should just be honest to ourselves and say, I'm going to just seek some help. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's like a good advice that I need to follow myself as well. So Go to night three. <laughs> Young people friendly therapists. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll. I just have one last question, and uh, since we are at the end of this uh, podcast, could you like just give some advice to the new young girls out there 
are still figuring themselves out and people like me who are trying to find new things to do in life and uh, probably start a business as well so how can we just get started it has a one word answer start yeah <laughs> see you know um i get asked this question a lot and um very early on i used to wonder if i really need to write an answer for this question <laughs> yeah. because you know your your i've seen all these miss india stand there and give these amazing quotations from some complex book of a person who died about 8 decades ago and i'm telling myself what is the most practical advice i can give these girls or guys and i'm thinking it can't come from somebody who's been around like you know who was around like decades ago i mean sometimes it can but i'm just simply saying that i just look back at my life um or my present and i say one thing to myself so this is my own quote if you feel free to use it yeah, yeah? um uh, just take a chance on yourself because if you won't then who will and then why will others right yes. so i think that to me has been something that lifts me from the lowest moments of my day to um to help me just cross over a hard bridge and say well if uh, somebody has to do it it may as well be me right literally roll up my sleeves pick up the bags walk past this right just get past that dark room and get out of it um just works yeah it works um i don't mean to again simplify things into nuggets but if an instagram post can change your mood for the day surely a nugget can be a nugget yes. right? <laughs> otherwise just pick up the phone talk to your mom talk to your dad talk to friends that you believe in uh talk to people who are not in in the situation that you are they're not too close to it so that you see the big picture i mean at the end of the day even this conversation we are having on 2nd march or whatever in 2023 two years from now i'm going to look back and think about this conversation and think oh my god i could have improved so much i have changed a lifetime since then and you'll do the same right i mean yes. you'll probably be running your startup because you plan to start the minute we finish the show <laughs> of right? course i do yeah so that's about it thank you so much for taking your uh, valuable time that i can say and this has been very insightful for me and hopefully for everyone else that is going to watch this and yeah that's about thanks it thanks very much for having me it's always a pleasure and i am always around to help especially young women who are waiting to wonder what next i'll yes. be right here to help you get some clarity yeah i just think shout i need to come more often to you now <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. thank you so much all the best cool soon yeah, see you bye bye